You've heard me say this before, but I think that crypto's best use case is actually strengthening our property rights. And I made a video on this. Like I've also said before, I believe that the great wealth transfer is going to make it so that once us millennials are starting to pass away, we're going to be saving our money in crypto, Bitcoin, Ethereum, whatever the blue chips are at that time. However, that is not ready to happen right now because what happens if I lose my private keys, I lose my funds forever. That's going to keep a lot of people out the game. There needs to be will services, services that says, oh, if I don't send a transaction from this wallet in, I don't know, a year or two years, it automatically gets sent to this wallet. Or what if I get hacked? There needs to be some kind of smart contract in place that says, okay, I'm going to send the funds off to another address and then notify you so that your funds are secure. Today, we're going to be interviewing Josh, the CEO at Praxis, and they're trying to solve some of these issues that we just discussed with their new wallet service and their KYC service. So we're gonna break down what Praxis is, what Kill Switch is, all of the features that it has, when it's gonna be ready, how you can get involved and use it, and what to look forward to. So without further ado, let's get Josh on the line. How you doing today, man? How's oh, everybody? I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. It's been a, it's been a busy cycle, busy time of life, and uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited to have this chance to talk with you today, so. Same here, man. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from a place called uh, Winchester, Virginia. It's just outside of the D.C. area. So, okay. yeah, I used to go to Virginia Beach uh, as a kid all the time. So, ah, yes, I, I did. I did one tour in Virginia Beach. It's a, it's a nice place. Nice, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah, man. So we met at East Denver what, like two weeks ago. Did you make some good connections down there? Oh, I, I really did. I, I managed to have a full page of writers for my team of who I met from each day that I was there. Yeah, yeah. Really was a useful time, even though we didn't have a booth or anything. Just going and meeting as many people as we could was incredibly beneficial for to us. Yeah, same here. That's good to hear, man. That's good to hear. I made some good connections as well. Uh, well, sweet, man. So before we get into it, man, I just want to thank you for your time. And if you could just briefly give an introduction on yourself and your professional background uh, and how you got into crypto, that'd be great. Sure. So my professional background is a little bit different than the average person who seems to be in crypto. I started out from high school. I did a single year of college, uh, got bored and joined the Navy. And then for the next 10 years, I was bouncing around doing various things, ended up being in the dive community as a dive med tech. Uh, started fooling around with crypto on a personal level around 2015, 2016, just really starting to get a grasp of it from there. At about 10 years in, I realized that I needed to be home with my kids. I have four kids right now. At the time I had three and it was like, it was just time. It was, I needed to be there and get out and be a father. So then I went and worked in the financial sector for Navy Federal Credit Union, working in their call center, doing operations. From there, I got an opportunity to work with another crypto company and was starting out that process and uh, helped them get off the ground. But while we were working on that project, really found that I wanted to be in the infrastructure side of crypto. While other things are flashy and cool, the underlying technology is really what I enjoy um, and seeing, being able to pull that together. So we ended up forming Praxis to uh, build out both security and infrastructure, which were things we felt were kind of lacking in some areas. And it's not that people aren't doing this, it's just we saw a need for particular services and went in that direction. And it's what most of us like doing. Nice, man. I love that story. That makes sense. You are in operations. You like to get into the infrastructure of things. That's cool, man. So perfect segue. Did you want to break down what Praxis is and how it works with Killswitch and Intrust KYC? Sure. I'll, I'll actually start with Intrust because it's actually a product that we've shelved for the time frame. It's going to come off our website here in the near future, but it was what we originally started Praxis to make. Um, okay. There is at the previous company I was at, we took them through a reg S for launching an L1. And that was just a pain. And so in the process of going through that, we we're like, there is a definite need for a better KYC system or a KYB system in the crypto space. And so we came up with this idea for how Intrust could be a aggregate of all the KYC providers that developers would just be able to tap into so that you could, as an individual, select which company you wanted to use as an aggregator. But what we found is that for the time being, protocols didn't want to necessarily trust somebody else's 
KYC. And yeah. so for now, until there's a better standard that's across the board for crypto as to what KYC means, we're going to keep that on the back burner. We're not completely getting rid of it, it but it is um, it is something that we will address in the future as the regulations move a little bit for farther forward. We'll get to see what's actually needed and then be able to build to that. But for the time being, interest is on the back burner. But I'll use this to segue into how we ended up in Kill Switch because okay. we were building in trust, and this is back in July. And all of the sudden, our lead developer came to us and said, Hey guys, listen, there was an exploit on for one of my wallets, and he got taken for over 100K in uh, assets. Just how did the exploit happen? So it was off of the Harmony network. It yeah. wasn't due to our developer's own fault. There was an extension update and that saved the private keys in plain text. And so a lot of people got hit. Our lead developer happened to be one of them. And so he came to us and said, gentlemen, uh, just lost my, our runway, but I think I know how I could have stopped it. And so that is actually how we built Kill Switch was they came out of this theft. Wow. And that's the, that's what it is. So there's a, there's a very real need in the crypto space because there's so many opportunities for you to lose your private keys. You interact with the, the wrong protocol, click on the wrong link, decide to get into a risky NFT and your private keys get exposed. Or sometimes through no fault of your own, there's an exploit that happens. And that's really what we're trying to secure is the private key side of this. So that if you are exploited, we can evacuate your wallet into a backup wallet with kill switch and that, that's the primary function of what kill switch is we do a bunch of other things with it where we can monitor your wallet and make sure that uh, the transactions are yours we have a system in place so that like the proactive defense for it is really what makes kill switch kill switch because we're we'll be watching it someone tries to make a transaction on your wallet and it will front run it and evacuate all of your other funds into the backup wallet that you have set up. We don't hold it for you. It's your wallet to your wallet. We don't hold your private keys. That's the essence of it. Okay. Did you have like a demo that you wanted to show? Maybe like showing the UI? Do you want to share your screen? Sure. I'll share my screen real quick. This is a very short demo on it. And this is just going to show exactly how quick the response system is in this. It's about 40 seconds. It just shows you how it's watched. Someone makes a transaction. It will send the alert for you. But I'll also provide you with the link to our demo via YouTube at the end of this. Um, that's a little bit longer of a demo. It's about three minutes, but it walks you through the entire setup process for how you'd go through it. So in this case, we've set up the wallet. This is watching a Harmony One wallet. And we use Harmony just because that's what our developers started with. And they're upset. They're set for that. So he's getting ready to make a transaction on here. As he goes through the process, you're going to see that he instantly gets a notification in one second over on his phone. That's how fast it is that it says do you recognize this do you not recognize this if you do recognize it transaction goes through if you say i do not recognize it it will immediately attempt to front run it and any other assets that are in your wallet will be evacuated into your backup wallet that's awesome it's almost like a 2fa but better so there's actually 2FA built into it as well so that nobody can come into the system and go, you know what, I'm going to come in and change your smart contract to evacuate to my wallet. So we went in and put 2FA both on your account and on the smart contract itself so that it has to be two sections that someone would have to get into as you to be able to get in, into the system to change it out. That's awesome, man. I love that. So I remember when we were at East Denver, you were saying you were waiting on your audit to come back. Would you would you guys end up getting that back yet? Or are you still waiting on that? We are finishing it up right now. They came back with some minor tweaks and a couple of suggestions here and there. But all in all, it came back as a pretty clean audit. We should be finished making the adjustments by, if not the end of this week, the end of next. And We'll begin ready to launch early Q2 okay. is when we should be launching Kill Switch for, for anyone to use. Nice. And which chain or chains are you guys launching on initially? So we are chain agnostic and nice. our goal is to get to everywhere we need to be. However, we do have to add chains individually to the system. So we're starting out with EVM chains in particular. We're starting with ETH, AVAX, CELO, and BNB but we're going to keep expanding as we go. Makes a lot of sense. Now I want to cover like the barriers of entry to use. Like, you know, let's say I want to get started with this thing. Is there an upfront cost? Do you guys charge a fee per transaction? Like how are you guys making money on this thing? So what we are doing is, is going with a subscription service. Uh, okay. This will be $3 a month per chain. 
So if you want to use AVAX, $3 a month. If you want to use AVAX and ETH, now it's going to be $6 a month. Per chain um, wallet, right? Per chain per wallet. So that's the goal for right now. We are looking at scaling options. We only have four chains right now, so it will probably won't be in those ranges. But we are looking at if you have four chains and one a fifth, uh, maybe that one is half off and so on and so forth so that you're not paying uh, a ridiculous amounts but at the same time if your only major bag is avax that you only have to pay for that so like let's say i, I i'm using a kill switch wallet boom 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 and you know i want to use it i'm going on uniswap is it a matter of putting in like a rpc or is it selecting a new wallet like how to select metamask and use metamask is there going to be like a whole new thing or does it integrate how does that part work so we'll just clarify this we are not a wallet Okay. We are a wallet security system. So if okay. you want to use MetaMask, you use your MetaMask wallet and say, I want you to watch this address. Okay. And then like for myself, I use MetaMask and then I have my cold storage as my backup. So I would use my MetaMask as my hot wallet on a regular basis. And if something does happen to it, it's going to evacuate into my cold storage, which is just that added layer of security for me. It does work on both hot and cold storage wallets. It's more designed for the hot wallet, just for average use and function, but it does work on all wallets. Man, I can't wait till you guys launch. I'm gonna use this for my hedge fund. So as far as the billing goes, I imagine that you guys have like a smart contract that would just you guys, what, just deduct ETH from the wallet or something like that or whatever the assets chain is? Well, so you end up paying in advance for it. So you say, hey, I want this, and it adds time to your contract. And we'll actually send you notifications that say, hey, you have 10 days left on your uh, kill switch. Uh, do you want to re-up? Do you have five days left? Um, we can set it so that you can get the notifications where you want them. Okay. And as far as you guys, it's like targeting, are you guys going after like a certain niche or just anyone who like uses DeFi? Because it sounds like it could be great for like institutions. So off the bat, this is made for a B2C level. Like that is our target. There is a institutional level that we would be interested in going after, but it's really anybody who's using DeFi. If you have a crypto wallet, this product can be for you. As we see the DeFi space grow, this is going to become more and more necessary because, you know, self-custody is a very key part of the space. But with that, it becomes your own responsibility to provide security because it's in your own custody. So we really want to make sure that we're providing that solution for the average user to come in and go, how can I add that layer of security for me? Okay. Hell yeah, man. Do you have like any, any competitors that you guys know of that's like building the same thing or something similar? We've seen some competitors. No one is doing it quite like we are. That's not to say they aren't doing parts of what we are doing. For instance, we have a option for a wallet recovery that's just built into it. This is actually on our free tier. You can come in, just use Kill Switch and say, hey, if I lose my wallet or seed phrase, um, if you're the unfortunate person who throws out your hard drive and you need to evacuate those funds, you can set it up so that you have a manual trigger to say, hey, I need to recover this wallet because I lost it and have it go into another wallet that you've pre-set up. Just as a nice feature for people to have, we understand accidents happen, fires happen, you end up losing information because you saved your Fee, seed phrase uh, on any any system that you shouldn't have and it's gone. We want people to have that option to have that wallet recovery. We've also built in a feature that you can turn on, which we have to come up with a better name for, but it's our dead man evacuation that says, if you don't interact with this wallet. A lot of military names there, huh? <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't come up with this one, but this, this is evacuation that says, if I don't interact with this wallet in X number of days. I was literally gonna add- it evacuates it into a backup wallet to, for somebody else. And this would be like set up right now. It's just set up for your personal setup this way. If you're doing stuff and you want to make sure that your spouse has the option of having your funds move to a joint wallet in the event that you become unresponsive in X number of days, that would be an option. We see this also in the future being tied into wills and trusts and that kind of stuff. But for the initial technology, this was just, I didn't share my seed phrase. I didn't share any of my login information with my spouse but they have their own login information. We want them to be able to have it if I don't log in in 24 months or however you want to set it up. Yeah, that's awesome. Two things I was going to say, like, man, this sounds like perfect for like a will service because as crypto matures and people realize that Bitcoin's better than gold and they start saving Bitcoin for their kids versus gold and some, someone passed away, there needs to be something that says, hey, if I don't do a transaction in this wallet for a month or a year or whatever parameters you decide on, 
you know, it needs to get sent to this wallet. So I, I think that's very needed. And that's awesome that you guys are building that. The second thing is, so when I want to interact with Praxis, because you guys are a wallet security service, like you said, yeah. is there an app that I download or do I just go to the website or how does that part work? So the, an the answer is, go is going to be both for that. We do have our website and landing page that's just informational at this point. There is an app that you will download. We are starting with it on the Google Store, and that should be launching here in the next two weeks as soon as it comes back. We'll be putting in for getting on the Apple Store as well here in the near future. But you'll have an app that sits on your phone. And then you'll go into the website. The app will allow you to do our 2FA to get in and it will be able to have it set up so you can change your parameters as you go. The website itself is where you'll take your wallet address and load it into the system and say, hey, watch this address. Here's my backup address. But you'll be able to interact with it once you've done all that on your phone. Because we're really pushing a mobile first. Um, that's where we see the technology moving in the future. And so we want to make sure that we have, are building in the direction of using your phone. Yeah, man, that's that's another thing, man. You guys are just hitting all the points. Like right now, I discourage anyone to do DeFi on their phone because of Agreed. all the security risks. But having something like Praxis on your phone to where, you know, you can set something up so you can, you know, front run the transaction, everything that you guys are working on, it makes it a lot safer to do DeFi on your phone. So I think that will usher in dApps, building mobile friendly dApps as well in the future. So yeah, that's, you guys are going to kill it, man. You guys keep, keep working. Well, on I'm excited. To I appreciate you. your confidence in us, um, which we will have to talk about this at the end. I've been looking for something like this for years, man. Yeah. Well, I, that, that's exciting. Cause we, this is something that I thought it was the uh, paranoid people just cause you know, sometimes you get paranoid about things and I thought maybe it was just us going, Hey, we're super paranoid about this kind of thing. Um, uh, making sure that your phone is secure against the various apps and everything else. We've actually, we haven't quite inked the deal yet, so I won't drop names just yet, but we are partnering with a mobile company that is doing secure phone applications that compartmentalize where the information is stored so that you could run crypto off on your phone safely and we're going to be a native app on their platform as we build that out yeah good luck on that and yeah as you guys launch and start to build things out man you guys are welcome to come on anytime man because this is something like i i see why you would think like oh is this just for paranoid people but man there are a lot of people that don't do DeFi because of what you guys have isn't existent yet Exactly. So being paranoid is good in this space, especially you seeing all the hacks and stuff that's going on. There's that old, old saying, uh, I don't know who, who said it first, but just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they're not out to get you. Exactly. I agree. So my next question is, before we wrap things up here, you already talked about extra things that you guys are doing in practice. Is there anything else um, that you guys are cooking in the kitchen that we haven't spoke about? Anything else for people to look forward to? Yes, we have a couple things that we are really thinking about and, and working towards in the DeFi space. The mobile application are really where we see our next play coming in because we want to be able to transact on a regular basis. Right now, crypto is tied to your laptop due to security. Um, this is going to hinder people from being able to walk up into the gas station and pay for their gas using crypto. It's possible, but you run security risk. And so we really want to secure that side of the house. Kill switch is still our foremost vision for the future where we need to secure that and push that, that, that out. But once we get that delivered, which will be very soon, we're going to move towards the mobile aspect of crypto. Sweet, man. Well, did you want to tell the audience how to find you? Twitter, socials, website, all that stuff. I'll leave links to all these in the description as well. Yes. Uh, so I'm not very Twitter active right now, but that is going to change here in the near future just as we start to move out. It's a necessary part of the Web3 space. And so we're going to adjust that. Uh, the kill switch dot io is the website for kill switch and praxis inc is our other website and all my contact information is on there both of those are also our twitter handles and you'll see those start posting here in the near future and lastly any final thoughts that you want to share for the audience man anything else uh, just we're really excited to be in the space like it's such an adventure moving from the navy into crypto to be able to just meet people like yourself at different events and just like have this shared passion for this next step in technology and so it's, it's really a joy to be to be here and to be able to work on all these things and i hope we can work together on a couple other things in the future because it's just a good time to be in the business even even in the bear market we we like building here and i, I like being able to come on and do these kind of things so i'm looking forward to having this be a long career.
Hell yeah, man. Well, hey, I applaud what you guys are doing. Let me know if I can support you guys in any way. And as you guys build out and launch more products, you guys are always welcome on the show or on the show. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. Well, I appreciate the time, Josh. Well, thank you.